Well, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the great pleasure of introducing a UT engineering alumnus who has done exactly that, our commencement speaker, Dr. Hector Jesus Ruiz. Dr. Ruiz is a distinguished graduate of the School of Engineering. He is an accomplished engineer, corporate strategist, and chief executive. A luminary in the field, Dr. Ruiz has helped build and guide top-tier technology companies for nearly three decades, including Motorola and AMD. He is also a passionate, passionate advocate of engineering education. Dr. Ruiz is currently the founder and CEO of Bull Ventures and chairman of Advanced Nanotechnology Solutions. He is a native of Pedras Negras, Mexico. Dr. Ruiz holds a bachelor's and master's degree in electrical and computer engineering from UT and a doctoral degree from Rice University. Dr. Ruiz began his engineering career at Texas Instruments in the company's research laboratories and manufacturing operations. He then went on to Motorola, where he spent two decades. At Motorola, he rose from running a microchip fabrication facility in Scotland to becoming president of Motorola's semiconductor products. In 2000, Dr. Ruiz joined AMD as president and chief operating officer. Two years later, he was named CEO. At AMD, Dr. Ruiz set the strategic directions for the company, helping guide its growth from a small, uh, broad supplier of components to an innovative technology solutions leader in the price processor space. He has received numerous accolades, including being named Fortune Magazine's list of top 25 business leaders. And throughout his career, Dr. Ruiz has worked to advance people's access to education through the use of technology. He has served, and I'm very glad he has served, on the Cockrell School's Engineering Advisory Board since 1998. And in 2000, we recognized Dr. Ruiz as a distinguished engineering graduate at UT Austin. And just recently, earlier this year, in 2012, Dr. Ruiz received the Distinguished Alumni Award from the Texas Exes. This is the highest honor reserved for exceptional alumni at the University of Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Hector Ruiz. Thank you, Dean Fembus. And uh, thank you, parents, friends, for being here honoring your graduates. I was one of you in the audience uh, 45 years ago. And before you think that's too old, let me tell you, I just saw a couple of professors I had when I was here in school. So. <laughs> you know, um, I have a very special bond with the University of Texas in general. Uh, not only did I come to school here, but my, I have a son that graduated from here uh, in engineering. Uh, I have a niece, a nephew, and most recently, I have a granddaughter that's a freshman at UT, so there's a lot of connection for me emotionally, intellectually, and very personal to this university. But today, I must say that you are the reason we're here today, and we must applaud you for your accomplishments. And most importantly, I'm very grateful to you, to the faculty, and to all of those here that I was invited to share this very special occasion with you today. It is hard for me to believe that, that almost 45 years ago, I had the privilege of actually being in the audience like you. And I was full of enthusiasm, excitement. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I remember paying a lot of attention to the commencement speaker. And I have a feeling some of you in the audience are probably doing the same. But I, one thing I do remember, I had a, what I would call apprehensive hopefulness. That means I was full of apprehension, but at the same time, full of optimism, looking forward to the future. And it was those emotions that prevented me, really, from paying a lot of attention to what was being said. But I do remember that the people that stood up here were trying to be helpful, 
We're trying to give honest, sincere advice and saying things to the graduates that at the time meant a lot to them and meant a lot to the graduates. I know this ceremony means a lot to the guests here tonight, the people whose love, dedication, and sacrifice has helped you achieve something very unique. In my case, it helped me achieve something that no one in my family had ever achieved. And some of you in the audience perhaps are first generation graduates, but I have a feeling some of you are third, fourth, fifth, many generation graduates. So it is really important to remember, as Dean Fenber said, is how critical our family and friends have been in the journey that you have undertaken. I know they're very proud, and I suspect many are also relieved because the engineering degree that you will receive represents some of the best job opportunities that exist today. As a matter of fact, a recent article that just got published on Forbes magazine a couple of weeks ago says that all engineering degrees comprise more than a third of all of the jobs that are considered most valuable today. That's impressive. Not only are you destined, destined to achieve great things as our leading doers, makers, thinkers, and innovators, but you're fortunate to be embarking on your career at a time that the opportunities to be rewarded for your hard work are greater than have been for a long time. This has not always been the case, and I'm sure you know engineers who will testify to that. You're also embarking on the next stage of your life at the very time that your unique and prized skills are greatly needed in the world. Engineering people are facing challenges today that are incredibly difficult and unique. And those challenges are far more fundamental and more important than those of us in previous generations have faced. Now that may sound like hyperbole, and it isn't. I believe it. It is true. And it doesn't mean that others have not had great challenges. They have and have, some, and have done some great things with far less resources than people have today. But for my generation, the Cold War defined define our existence. The challenges for engineers in my day revolve around researching and developing principles, methods, processes, and tools that were primarily driven by military needs. And of course, the space race was part of this, a race that took engineering where it had never gone before. But those engineers' achievements of that era were truly remarkable, and I don't want to discount them in any way. We stand on the shoulders of those great generations, and if it weren't for the engineers at the Bell Laboratories many years ago that invented the transistor, and the engineers that later on went on to develop the computing technology that we benefit from today, I would not be speaking in front of you today. My career and my life would have been entirely different. But I believe those feats will pale in comparison to the achievements that you are being called upon to make in your time. The National Academy of Engineering has a list of the 21st century's grand engineering challenges and that makes it abundantly clear. I suspect that many of you are familiar with that list. If not, I encourage you to find it and consider the kind of game-changing engineering challenges that the greatest scientists and engineers of today are facing and must solve if humanity is to flourish. Now, there are people that look at that list and come away thinking that it places a hell of a burden of responsibility on you, future generation of leaders, and it does. After all, most of the challenges derive from the inescapable reality that our planning is straining to support seven billion people who share a single home and who share finite resources. The proverbial handwriting definitely is on the wall. But in the face of incredibly complex challenges, what do you do as engineers? Well, we lean in, our curiosity takes over, and we get energized. 
We ask questions. We ponder problems. We even get creative, which a lot of people don't think engineers are capable of doing. Our questions and the search for ways to cut through the complexity and find a solution invariably leads to collaboration. And that's more important than ever. Engineering successes have never been achieved by working in silos. We've reached across disciplines and beyond specializations to find the expertise and insight to solve those problems. We are and have always been convergent thinkers. But you all are convergent thinkers of a completely different order. Whereas at the beginning of my career, I had to walk across campus or travel across the country to be able to talk to others who could help me and assist me in finding solutions to problems. Today, it's much different than that. You can collaborate with people not only in your own town, in your own country, but in other continents. And you have the capability of bringing together that talent around the world to address the problems of today in a collaborative manner that was never possible before. This kind of interdisciplinary and international cooperation is going to be essential to really solve the problems that lie ahead. And of course, protocols will come to play for they are necessary to determining goals, finding the highest leverage approaches, and making the smartest applications of existing technologies until you finally discover the ideal one. You know the drill, all right? Of course you do. And that, thanks to the incredible institution and the exceptional academic community here at, at the Cocker School of Engineering. You have the education, the cutting edge ideas, and the problem solving skills that allow you to address the big challenges ahead. <clears throat> so you see, it's more than just a nice sounded tagline. What happens here and what you do from here really will change the world. I believe it and so it should you. You know, a commencement speaker is obliged to offer a few words of wisdom or some hard-earned truths that might inspire or guide you as you make your way to the world. And while I intend to follow the protocol, I have to do so with reservation. I've given this a lot of thought, and what can I say? I'm an engineer like you. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm fairly a pretty serious fellow, and I didn't want to offer platitudes or say something that isn't remotely relevant to you. But I wonder what could I possibly say that perhaps you might remember the future. So I came up with five things that have made a big impact in my life, and I'd like to explore with them briefly with you. The first one is stay curious, my friends. I can tell you there is nothing I could tell you today that's more significant that would impact you than curiosity. And I have some friends that come to me and say, well, Hector, if you keep preaching this thing about curiosity, what if somebody is going to tell you that curiosity killed a cat? And my answer to that is, yeah, but the cat has many lives, and we know that. The second one is resist limits. There's going to be plenty of people that are going to tell you what you can and cannot do. And there is a tendency sometimes for those limits to be self-imposed. George Bush, the last Bush president that we had, had a phrase that says, there is a soft bigotry of law expectations that permeates our society. Nothing can be farther from the truth if you let it happen. I continually am familiar with that because I had to confront such low level of expectations for myself throughout my career. But it's critical that you don't let others define that. The, th the third thing is remain open to the world. Go places, travel, learn about other cultures, about other things going on, broaden your experience. You'd be amazed the learning that comes with that. I was very fortunate in my career to have been sent, sometimes grudgingly, to other parts of the world to work, and only to come back later to the US being thankful for having had that experience. The fourth piece is keep your family close. I mean this both in the physical and the spiritual sense. And I mean more than just your parents and siblings. You know, my parents are not with me here today, but they're with me in spirit. Their words, their advice continue to guide every choice that I make in my life. 
And I also draw on the wisdom and inspiration of friends and teachers and mentors and faculty like the one here today who took so much time and energy to guide me and help me alone. Keep your family close. Lastly, always find ways to give back. Dean Fenn, the story about the graduates that have done some amazing things to give back to the university is inspiring. And I encourage you to consider that. Our world is full of inequality and inequities. We are the privileged ones. And finding a way to overcome these great challenges that lie ahead is going to take all of us, every one of us. It will take, everyone needs to be part of the solution. You are among society's most potent makers and innovators. Encourage, teach, lead, and give so that others behind you will have the same opportunities that you're gonna to have today. Thank you very much.